Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate some of our environmental education superstars this year. Um, a year like no other, 2020 challenged all of us to reinvent the proverbial box because thinking outside the box wasn't even sufficient. And with flying colors, all of us did just that. We learned how to Zoom, Meets, Teams, WebEx, our programs out to whomever would watch. We flubbed our way through video production and YouTube, ran virtual classrooms, dropped off lab supplies, begged the post office for a discount. But these are for my students. Can you give me any discount? And we were doing it because we're all in the same boat, rowing in the same direction, supporting each other, and lifting each other up because that's what we do in our environmental education community. So tonight is a night unlike any other award ceremony um, night, and I'm so thankful that we were able to put this all together. And this is the night where we recognize individuals and organizations for their stellar work and leadership in the field of environmental education. We can do this free of charge this year. Um, thank you to the generosity of our sponsors, for the entire conference was underwritten by PSE&G, New Jersey Natural Gas, and our wonderful anonymous donor, who is a friend of science and environmental education in New Jersey. The award ceremony specifically was sponsored by BASF. Our conference committee volunteers, I'd like to give a shout out to them. Um, Beth, Aaron, Hugh, myself, uh, Jess, Kendra, uh, Kirsten, Liz, Laura, Laura, Lauren, whew, Max, Mike, Pat, Sam, Stephanie, and another Stephanie, uh, and lots of individuals and organizations who ran in-person field experiences on the Saturday, um, as well as um, our film festivals and, and such. Couldn't have done any of this without the uh, conference committee. Um, and I would also like to introduce, and I think Pat will probably do this again, our awards committee specifically, who has the most fun job. Um, I was awards chair for a little while and it's a blast. Uh, we have Pat Heaney, our awards chair, uh, Amy Arado, Aaron Colfax, Carol Fusco, Ann Price, and Mike Skelly. And so we give the, the Zoom clap. <laughs> and without further ado, I'm gonna hand the whole evening over to Pat Heaney. Um, she's got a wonderful program. Thank you, Kelly. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in. Uh, Mike, you're going to start sharing some slides for me, and we'll get that going in just a moment. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, normally, this is a dinner, and I kept saying the awards dinner, and of course, there's no dinner this year, but we will. We'll get you dinner. No, no problem. Next year, we'll have dinner. Uh, each year, we honor people in New Jersey with these outstanding educator awards. And it's always really a heartwarming thing to read all the nominations. And I know that our committee loves doing this. They love reading the nominations. And the fun thing is they don't know who any of the nominees are because it's done blindly. The names are redacted, except in some cases, our uh, Lifetime Achievement Awards. It's kind of hard to hide who they are, but we have educator awards in a number of categories. So I'm going to start with our first outstanding environmental educator. And this is the formal sector. And what that means, the formal sector, is someone who teaches in a classroom, in a public or private school, in this case, a charter school. So this year's awardee for outstanding environmental educator in the formal sector is Jennifer R. Karsich from Unity Charter School. We're so happy to honor Jennifer. Now, long before she was a teacher, Jennifer was an environmental educator. As a child, she visited her town's environmental center and learned to feed baby raccoons who had lost their mother. And she also saw how bees made their hives. She shared what she learned with her family and used it to write her school reports. 
She was fortunate to have a childhood filled with camping, hiking, fishing, and gardening. And that set her on a path of viewing the world through the lens of sustainability. Fast forward a few decades, and she was a new teacher cultivating a flower garden in an abandoned lot in, with her students in Jersey City. She started a pizza patch garden, that sounds awesome, on another campus, all while expanding her personal growth in living sustainably. Composting, using cloth napkins, and cleaning with homemade tea tree solutions became part of her life and her teaching practice. Every day, she educated her students about systems thinking, along with multiple perspectives. She ran rain barrel workshops for the public, created relationships with local farms and businesses, and expanded her school's gardens to become true outdoor classrooms. Jennifer helped create the school's green team and took on advocacy projects with her students. Oh, there they are in Washington. Jennifer finds the most rewarding part of being an environmental educator is seeing her students advocate for things they believe in. She helps them take their learning in directions that interest them. They often look deeply at materials they own or things they like to do and ask themselves, how does this impact the planet? How am I impacting the planet? These deep questions often lead them to action. Her second graders wrote to Lego and asked them to look into making plant-based plastics and about a product reclamation program. Her middle school students helped organize the climate strike. I saw we saw a picture of that and a local plastic bag ban. They also changed sunscreens, became vegetarian and started using recyclable water, reusable water bottles after some investigations the impact her students have made is her biggest source of joy. Jennifer's work in the field expands as she continues to learn more. She is proud to share her new learnings and help create our future eco-literate citizens. Let's have a round of applause for Jennifer and everything she is doing in and out of the classroom. Thank you. Jennifer, and we can we can even come off mute. And, and <laughs> hey, Jennifer. Hey. Hey. Very good. Well done. Oh. good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. My name is Jennifer Karsich. I'm the supervisor of curriculum and sustainability coordinator at Unity Charter School in Morristown, New Jersey. Being named the Angie's Formal Sector Environmental Educator of the Year is a tremendous honor. I have always prided myself with sharing the importance of our wonderful planet with others. As I have evolved as an educator, so is my focus on what children really should know to become eco-literate citizens for tomorrow. From my students' very first flower garden at Sacred Heart School in Jersey City to the pizza patch at Liberty Corner in Basking Ridge, I've incorporated the importance of caring for the environment no matter where I taught. Through the work at Unity Charter School and other agencies across our country, I've been able to broaden my understanding of what it means to live sustainably. Yes, at Unity, we reduce, use, and recycle, but my job is to have our students question how to take it a step further. We are a zero waste school. We compost our lunchroom scraps, march in youth climate strikes, create mini solar cars, and hold park cleanups as part of our normal school day. We have a school garden that provides food for our vegetarian lunch program, and I've been fortunate to take the lead in the expansion of all of our outdoor spaces on campus and fill, the, um, and fill them with learning opportunities and native species. I've taught our students to ask, where do materials come from? How will it get there? How much does it cost? How long is it going to last? What impact will it have on the planet and the animals and the school grounds? In 2020, our green team had big plans to overhaul the entire garden, replacing all 10 raised beds, creating a monarch butterfly garden. Our middle school wrapped up a deep dive into fast fashion and held their own sustainable fashion show. And then we had to close the school, the pandemic hit. We quickly navigated our events, our green team events onto Zoom, and I created Fabulous Friday Choice Boards where our families could still get outside for their learning adventures. We partnered with The Great Swamp, Trans Options, Grow It Green, and other agencies to provide sustainable constructivist lessons. It became obvious that our green team wouldn't be able to overhaul the garden themselves. 
So when the PTO called me and said, where should we deliver the garden beds? I said, how about to my house? And that's when I decided my students' plans would still be fulfilled, even if it could only be done by one family. My family and I built, transported, and installed the garden beds last spring. We transplanted 100 baby milkweed and butterflyweed plants and overhauled the entire garden space. As June approached, it was evident that we needed to make outdoor classrooms so that we could be safe and socially distant. That's where I set up times for families, for uh, times for family and staff to come and help build our outdoor learning space. The tree rounds were incredibly heavy and I applaud the tremendous physical efforts from my husband and sons each summer evening they came to help move them around our campus. This year, Unity's open for in-person learning and we're back to crafting solutions for the planet. I know that I'm not alone in taking on the Herculean effort of bringing environmental education into the forefront of students' lives. I feel extremely lucky to work with an establishment that allows me to continue to learn about sustainability as part of my job description and connect with the professionals in all walks of life. I wanna thank Angie and its members and all those educators who teach science, who teach social justice and who are teaching our students to become systems thinkers. Your work is essential and I'm glad to be a representative of our collective efforts. Thank you, Jennifer. Congratulations again. And can you hold up your award so we can see it? All right, there it is. Usually we would hand it to you, but this year we kind of unceremoniously ship them to most people. So, but congratulations. Thank you. Our next outstanding environmental educator is in the non-formal sector. And what that means is people who don't work in a traditional classroom. They might work outdoors at a nature center or in a zoo or an aquarium or a museum or any number of places where they're educating outside of the traditional classroom. And our non-formal educator who works with schools is Jessica Grill from the Pinelands Institute. Congratulations, Jessica. So let me tell you a little bit about Jessica. Jess says she likes, she says she fell into environmental education and has loved every part of the trip. She was originally looking toward a career in veterinary medicine, but at an environmental education and animal behavior internship at the Philadelphia Zoo after college, she fell in love with the field of environmental ed. Through working with school groups and the public at the zoo, she noticed that even those who value nature and wildlife tended to be disconnected from the local flora and fauna. This ignited a focus on creating positive bonds and experiences with local environments and to help people make informed decisions regarding both local and global issues. Jessica is a lifelong learner and science communicator. She achieved her master's degree in biology from Miami University, specializing in nature play and environmental stewardship. With her master's thesis on nature play as a means to environmental stewardship, encouraging social, emotional, and STEM learning. As her graduate level capstone project, she rebuilt the Pinelands Institute's education program from the ground up. And within three years, successfully pitched to have it become the official education and outreach program of the Whitesbog Preservation Trust. With help from Whitesbog board members, she rekindled a partnership with Pemberton Township Schools to bring the elementary students out to the Pinelands Institute to hold quarterly after school programs and to help create connections within the students' own ecological backyard. Jessica loves inspiring people of all ages to learn through play and via free form exploration. And on a personal note, I just wanna say how much help Jess has been with the Angie Conference for the past two weeks. She jumped right in as a volunteer and helped host and co-host our workshops. And she's been a great help, so we're so thankful. And let's have a round of applause for Jessica Grill. Woohoo! Jessica, good. Congratulations. Go Jess. 
Now we'll hear Woo! awesome. Everyone, thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to start by thanking my colleagues, Lise Maynard of a Preservation Trust and Sarah Burroughs, a fellow and environmental educator for nominating me for this award. And for Pat Heaney and the Angie Awards Committee for selecting me as one of the recipients of the 2020 Excellence in Environmental Education Award. I'm earnestly grateful for the recognition. Yep, and as, as Pat said, environmental education was not originally my plan. I stumbled upward into this field that I have grown to love. And through the experiences I had at the Philadelphia Zoo and subsequent experiences through other positions, it has only solidified my passion and my understanding of the work that all environmental educators do and the need for environmental education as a component and a complement to in-school learning. So what I've loved most about working with school students is allowing them to be, as I like to call them, free range children. I love providing the opportunity to have these students come out to an expansive area where they're free to play in the dirt and explore leaves on trees and dip a net into a pond and see what bugs they can catch. Many schools, they've had to cut down on their field trips and other programming due to funding or busing restrictions. This means that when a school does choose to come out to the Pinelands Institute for a program, it needs to be valuable to both the students as learners and the teachers as an addition to their in-classroom materials. Through many, oh, the, sorry, <laughs> uh, though many of them may not be aware of Ms. Frizzle, that is the role that I try to embody. Uh, by working with these students, I'm able to provide a safe space for them to ask questions, take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. Through the effort of myself and my instructors, I was able to support those teachers' hard work. Now, though the Pinelands Institute has consistently been providing on-site programs and in-person field trips, since the mid 80s, we had just recently begun branching out. Uh, my colleague Lise, herself a former teacher and educator, had assisted me in developing an ongoing partnership with the Pemberton Township School District. Through this partnership, uh, the Pinelands Institute would provide recurring programs and field trips for all of the elementary school students. We were providing the quarterly after school programs through the 21st century program and we had just begun the finalizing of teacher trainings and on-site activities at the Pemberton Early Childhood Education Center for their brand new outdoor classroom. And then COVID. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not going to rehash how absolutely bonkers this year has been. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the her Herculean effort of translating in-person programs into virtual and distance-based formats. What is exciting is knowing so many teachers and educators who have, whether employed or not, dedicated their time to improving themselves, their schools, their communities. I've seen old resources resurrected and refreshed, new resources created, and so much shared at little or no cost in order to support one another. Though the look of education, both formal and non-formal, is changing, I believe it is only for the better. Like the ecologies we discuss, we are adapting to new niches and opportunities. And yes, I say niche. There is that fun thing, whether it's niche or niche. Uh, this includes more diversity, better accessibility, and increased equity to those we provide our services to and to our fellow emergent and our career professionals in environmental education. We are creating and sustaining opportunities for our greater surrounding communities to be immersed in local habitats, 
to foster empathy for all living things and to disconnect then reconnect by connecting through nature. As I accept this award, I would like to remind everybody that there are so many awardees who came before me and there will be many after, all of us with the same desire to stimulate growth and to disseminate knowledge. What we all do every day in our roles as environmental educators is planting the seeds for the future. As Olive Mumba, the principal of the Birdland School in Lusaka, Zambia once said, I achieve because we achieve and we achieve because we meet the challenges together. Also, Pat, I am holding you to that offer of cake next year. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Congratulations again. Why don't we all come off mute for a big round of applause for Jess Grill. All right, Jess. Nice. Woo! Good job. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Our next awardee is also from the non-formal sector, but she, she does work with schools, but is well known for her work with the public. And before I get into this, I just want you to watch the slides because I don't know if she's a time traveler or if Zoom meant something very different when these pictures were taking, taken a few years ago. But watch the cap she's wearing throughout some of the photos. So tonight we honor Jenna Collins from Fernbrook Farms Environmental Education Center. And Jenna wears a lot of hats, not just that Zoom cap you'll see in the pictures. She is the Education Center Assistant Director. She's the Homeschool Director. And she's the Young Steward Summer Day Camp Director. She considers herself fortunate to have been a part of Fernbrook Farms Environmental Center's homeschool classes, school programs, summer camp, fundraising events, and so much more for the past 10 years. She began her EE journey as a summer camp counselor in 2011 after graduating from Rowan University with a degree in health and exercise science and education. Growing up exploring the Pine Barrens and the Poconos, fishing with her father and brother and going on family camping trips truly instilled a love for the outdoors. Once she started working with children outdoors and sharing her personal passion for the natural world, Jenna knew she found the right career. Jenna loves seeing a child's face light up with pride and accomplishment when they catch their first frog or hold a praying mantis for the first time or taste a new vegetable. It's such an amazing experience for them. When Jenna became director of homeschool programs at Fernbrook, it was a small program. She grew the homeschool program from just a handful of kids to over 275 students, ranging from ages three to 14 years old. Her favorite program that she built and continues to reinvent is the Young Stewards Summer Camp for young teenagers. It truly allows her to share the diverse ecological wonders of New Jersey with 12 to 14 year olds. During the summer, the young stewards go on day hikes, kayaking trips, canoe trips, fishing, crabbing, backpacking, camping, and so much more. She says that her ability to grow as an educator is all due to Fernbrook Farms Environmental Center. Oh, there she is in that Zoom cap. I wasn't lying. See that? <laughs> so she uh, says her ability to grow is because Fernbrook gives her the opportunity to connect deeply with so many organizations that have helped her expand her knowledge about informal education. She cites organizations like Oh, Angie, <laughs> the Farm-Based Education Network, the American Camp Association, as well as the Eastern Region Association of Forest and Nature Schools. They've all guided Jenna in creation of curriculum, hands-on experiential learning, training staff, and inspiring her to create life-changing experiences for children in nature. 
I know personally that Jenna's homeschool workshops at the Angie conference are always a big hit and I've attended them and I've learned we, a lot of us have learned how to do homeschooling uh, classes from Jenna. So let's have a big round of applause for our time traveling, tra time traveling Zoomer, Jenna Collins. All right, Jenna. <laughs> Right, Jenna. Thank you so much. I want to thank um, Angie and uh, especially Pat um, for this award um, and my coworkers, especially Brian Kuzer, who's our Fernbrook uh, Farms Environmental Education Center director, um, is really because of his leadership and his guidance um, over the years that has allowed me to be creative in building and growing the programs um, especially my love of the homeschool program and our Young Stewards summer camp. Um, also, I want to thank my coworker and good friend, Stacy Lamel. Um, she is such an integral, integral part of our education team and working side by side with her is nothing but inspiring. Um, thank you to all those organizations as well. I know that there may have been a nomination out for me from Pinelands Adventures, who um, we've, I've also worked closely with. Um, I think we can all agree that the past year has been challenging um, for all educators. Um, and I'm so thankful that the team at Fernbrook Farms um, Education Center could really come together and accomplish so much in such a challenging year. Um, I also led our plant tomato and herb sale fundraiser. Um, it was one of our most successful fundraisers to date that we held, hold annually, um, which really helped our small nonprofit organization pushed through a two month closure and cancellation of all of our programs for several months. Um, we also had an ability to offer uh, in-person summer camp, which we were very lucky to have uh, the support of the Department of Health. Um, so offering summer camp for children during a time of a pandemic and us abiding by protocols and the kids abiding by protocols was such just a great experience to be a part of. Um, those kids truly needed a connection with nature um, in a time when they were uh, trying to isolate. Um, our staff members really pulled together to make sure that the children were uh, supported socially and emotionally while exploring their environment. Um, we were also able to offer a virtual learning assistance program in the past year to support our local community. We wanted to support those families who had working parents that needed a safe place for their children to complete their virtual schoolwork. Fernbrook also launched our Saplings Nature Preschool Program um, in the beginning of the year, which really has opened up a whole nother variety of education on the farm. Um, I was also able to expand our homeschool programs to accommodate more students and longer classes. All of this within a pandemic has been just uplifting every day to see those kids smiling faces as they're running and jumping through the forest or uh, searching for insects, meeting the farm animals, uh, waiting for a baby goat to be born. Those opportunities for the children hopefully are priceless. Our mission at Fernbrook has always been to connect children with their natural world and allow them to explore their curiosities. We knew it was vital for them to continue this. And it's been an honor to be a part of it and an honor to be honored. <laughs> um, we wanted children to be able to have the opportunity to adventure, explore, and be creative. So thank you again um, for presenting me with this award and thank you to everyone who has supported me and guided me and understands my passion for teaching and the environment. Thanks. Congratulations, Jenna. Oh, there it is. Hold it up high. Beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations, Jenna. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to move along. This is our newest award, the Pat Skelly Community Award. Just over three years ago, we lost one of the greats in environmental education in 
New Jersey, Pat Skelly. Pat was a uh, an advocate for environmental issues of all kinds, but really focused on the education. She was an Angie board member. She was president of Angie, along with her husband, Mike Skelly. They were part of Angie and so many more things throughout the years. Um, and we were so thrilled to have the community award, award named after her. Pat wanted this award to go to volunteer organizations who work together, who come together and make a difference in their community. And I'm so pleased this year that this award is going to the Girl Scouts of the Jersey Shore Howell Farmingdale community led by Donna Tornich. And this volunteer run community is part of the Girl Scouts of the Jersey Shore, the community leader Donna helps to organize her fellow volunteers to provide environmental and outdoor programs for hundreds of girls. There's Donna right there, waiting for a pancake, I think. <laughs> um, hundreds of girls go through the programs every year. Her team of volunteers runs monthly outdoor skills sessions for girls of all levels. The sessions are offered to the Howell Farmingdale troops and include sessions on leave no trace, compass skills, astronomy, water conservation, natural history, and much more. Volunteers, Catherine Zubedi, Dolores Zubedi, Evelyn Strain, and Jen Brown are also key in making these skills events happen. Each month, scores of girls take part in these fun and educational programs. Then you see right there, there's our annual encampment. She leads a team, including Jen Brown, Dawn Streeter, and Chris Filosa in providing an outdoor encampment every year in the Pine Barrens. Hundreds of girls come to learn survival skills, archery, and a variety of activities. Her encampments are so popular, the girls return every year, even after graduating from high school. Now, full disclosure here, I live in this town, Howell, and I know these all these women and I know the girls and uh, one year there was a group of senior high school seniors who are uh, ambassadors in Girl Scouting and I said oh it's going to be your last year at encampment we'll miss you last year and I think it was either Allie Filosa or Cynthia Streeter looked at me and said Miss Pat we'll be back next year I said well no, it's September. You'll be away at college or at jobs or whatever you're doing. Miss Pat, we'll be back next year. And wouldn't you know it? They came back the next year. They came from all around the country, wherever they were in college, and they came back to the encampment. And the next year and the next year till they were college graduates. And, and now these young women are the leaders. They continue to come and take on leadership roles at the encampment, encampment, helping the next generation of girls grow and learn. The Howell Farmingdale community also encourages the girls to take action by providing service. The community takes part in large scale tree plantings and helps the local schools in providing trees to all the grade four students in town every year. That's a big thing where every fourth grader gets a tree to plant. So each spring, this groups of Girl Scouts gather to count out and bundle hundreds of trees to be distributed to seven elementary schools in town. The Howell Farmingdale Girl Scouts is a strong and vibrant community of volunteers who help inspire girls toward environmental literacy and action. Their goal is to ensure a future with strong, thoughtful, intelligent, compassionate women. And these are all traits that Pat Skelly embodied. And I spoke to Mike just last night about Pat's interest in Girl Scouting. And it turns out she not only earned her gold award, the highest award a girl can get in Girl Scouting when she was young, but also was a Girl Scout leader herself. So I'd like to think that Pat would be thrilled that tonight we honor the Girl Scouts of the Jersey Shore Howell Farmingdale community. 
And I'd like to introduce uh, Howell's fearless leader, Donna Tornich. So let's have a big Yay. hand. Oh, there they all are. Congratulations, Donna. Wow. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. On, um, on behalf of myself and my team, I just can't thank you enough for this beautiful award. And just, Pat, everything you just said, just, I just thank you so much. This is like the greatest gift for us to be recognized for doing something that we love. And I've had the honor of working with the most amazing women, Pat, that you just, that you just said. So I'm just, just truly outstanding women. So thank you so much. Um, people have said to me many times that our group is an anomaly because we work so well together for so long. And um, I completely agree because everybody's so generous with their sharing of their knowledge and their kindness. Um, there, there are a few groups of people that can be together like we have for over 20 years and keep setting new standards and improving like our group. Our, um, this group constantly elevates each other and is a force for good. We are so overjoyed to share the love of our program and nature with the children and adults in our area. It is such a privilege for us to share our passion for the environment and the principles and skills to take care of it. It is wonderful not only to take the girls new places and have new experiences, which we do, but to be able to take them to parks they've been to many times. And as Girl Scouts, we get to show them many things they may not have seen before and teach them new ways of looking at things to allow them to experience parks and camps that are close to where they live and see them with new eyes. We get, a new, we get to see the new appreciation that grows from the experience and education which connects them to their world. We walk the trails, the parks and camps and leave them cleaner and better than we found them. We sh share our enthusiasm for the animals that live around us and protecting their homes trying to remove the fears that they may have of the outdoors and replacing it with exciting new knowledge. This team is outstanding at letting the children learn experientially and allowing them to problem solve on their own and work collaboratively to come out with the best solutions. As we share our love throughout our day events and multiple weekend events through the years, we get to see the girls grow. We get to see the confidence they gain from completing and accomplishing new goals. I feel like we get a very rare privilege that most people do not get. We get to see the girls grow through our program from the time they are five years old in kindergarten until they graduate. After 13 years of our program, like Pat was saying, we, we get to see our graduates um, celebrate their graduation at a ceremony at a, at a lake in a camp that has become a second home to all of us. Some of our leaders even return after college and become leaders. We could not be more proud of these women. Without the hard work and dedication of this team, the experiences would not be possible for our girls and our families. Most people don't get to see the behind the scenes that I do, the hours that goes into the preparation for all the programs and the events, and everybody on our team listens to each other's ideas and works together perfectly. They handle any challenges that our program faces, our budget constraints, weather events, um, and this year the pandemic too. I am so grateful for all the opportunities working with these outstanding women has provided our girls, the adults in our area, but me as well. These women on this team are the best of the best and I'm so grateful to receive this award on behalf of these dedicated Girl Scout volunteers and be able to thank this group of individuals who has become truly part of my family. I would not be who I am without them. Sorry, I cherish, cherish the knowledge that they have shared with me the time they have given and the lifelong friendships we have made. And I always cry, I'm so sorry. Um, I thank them, I thank you very much for this award and for recognizing this amazing group of women. Thank you so much. Congratulations. How Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. All you did. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
Our final award this evening is the Pat Patricia F. Kane, that's Patricia Florence Kane Lifetime Achievement Award. And if I'm not mistaken, Pat Kane is actually on the call tonight. Did I see her? I saw, thought I saw her earlier. So this, oh, there she is. Yes. So the Patricia Kane Award honors someone who has truly given a lifetime of work to environmental education in New Jersey, and who has reached out and who has touched so many people in so many ways. And we're, the funny thing about these is awards is usually when I send out the nominations for my team to look at. I don't vote. I just, because I know who everyone is, I redact the names and I send out these nominations for everyone on the team to uh, look at and vote and rank and all that. And I looked at this one. I said, how, why would I even bother Xing out her name? Everyone's going to know who it is because I think Everyone in New Jersey has been touched by Tanya's work. Even if you don't know Tanya personally, her work at the Devo Department of Environmental Protection has such a reach that it has influenced you whether or not you realize it. There, there are a lot of people on this call who could come up and speak about Tanya and say some wonderful things about Tanya Osnowich, but um, we'd be here all night if we did that. So um, I chose one person. <laughs> We've asked one of her closest co-workers and colleagues uh, to speak for us. And he has promised that he won't keep us here all night. So uh, and he's going to share his own screen because he promised to, to have embarrassing pictures of Tanya Osnowich. So mm -hmm. Mark Rogoff from New Jersey DEP, take it away. Just want to make sure you get the right one here because I have multiple screens. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Mark Rogoff. Tanya Osnowich and I worked together for over 20 years in the Environmental Education Unit of the Department of Environmental Protection. And I'm pop popping on a picture here now. So she was my supervisor my colleague and my friend. Working with her was such a rewarding experience. We grew so close, I wound up calling her my work wife. This did not upset my real wife. She loves Tanya as much as I do. And my children adore her as well. Hey, what's not to like? Well, I'll tell you what's not to like. She retired. Now there is no one there to tell me to shut up when I sneeze. No items hurled at me when I have my headphones on. No one to lean on the back of my chair causing me to tip over. No one to make me do all the heavy lifting. And no one to edit my speeches so I don't say something stupid. For 31 years, Tanya was there to fight for, defend, promote, justify, and support environmental education within the department the state curriculum, the schools, the communities, and the homes of every person living in New Jersey. Whenever there was a new initiative, either from within the department or from an outside partner, her participation was sought. Everyone knew she would contribute practical ideas and sage advice. She was instrumental in the creation and work of the New Jersey Governor's Commission on Environmental Education, oversaw the creation of multiple environmental lesson plans and guides, including Beneath the Shell, Here Today, Here Tomorrow Recycled, the EIC Project in New Jersey, the Environmental Primer, the Seeds Booklet and Website, and I have not even mentioned any of the great programs she oversaw within the Alliance. She was a founding member of the Alliance and over the years held about every board position there was. To quote Pat Kane, the namesake of this award, Tanya was the first secretary of Angie. This woman is a steamroller of determination. 
She was always the underlying force that made things work, that made things come together. Right after I started at DEP, Tanya brought me into Angie. As a techie kind of guy, she insisted that I help out with the tech issues, including all the award ceremonies. During these ceremonies, I noticed a trend that I would like to highlight. Every award winner lists people who influenced them either prior to or during their careers. I noticed that Tanya's name was mentioned nearly every time. It made me proud of her and the winners, knowing that these people saw what I saw in this remarkable woman. Her impact on so many cannot be measured, but it can be celebrated. And that is what we are doing now, celebrating the lifetime achievements of Tanya Ozuich and the immense contribution she has made to the field of environmental education, not just in New Jersey, but nationally as well. She may be the official winner of this year's award, but the real winners are the people who know and love her. Congratulations, Tanya. Thank you. Hey, Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Tanya. And now we're going to hear from Tanya herself. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was, wow. That was beautiful. Um, and I, uh, you brought back so many memories and to see those so many faces. Um, and it reminds me of my, all of my weight fluctuations too. <laughs> but um, anyways, I just wanted to say good evening, everyone. And thank you so much, um, Pat, Pat Heaney and the awards committee, thank you for uh, even considering giving me this, this Lifetime Achievement Award. And I would like to also thank the Angie board. It's so, many to, it's so good to see everybody's faces, Mike, Liz, Kelly, Beth, and everyone else on, on the board. Um, I'm grateful to receive this award. Um, I re looking back when Angie first started, I remember, um, often being asked, not what is Angie, people would often ask who is Angie, as if it's a female name. And I don't know if you guys remember that. <laughs> but what struck me, I, I wanna say congratulations to all of the award winners who we just heard from, because the work that you women are doing and just the, your faces, your work is Angie. You are Angie. And when we, when we say who is Angie, it's each of you. And I just applaud everybody's efforts. I just learned about each one of you guys made me want to just cry. And, um, you know, it was beautiful to see such uh, exemplary work being done every day. Um, I've always had such a great reverence for the Lifetime Achievement Award because it's named after Pat Kane. And um, I was so glad to see Pat's face um, here um, among us. And Pat's worn, Pat knows she's worn many hats in my life. Um, she plucked me from my environmental ed infancy and insecurities at Weiss Ecology Center and said, you can help me start this organization by being a founding officer. And um, she, she pulled me in and um, she's been my mentor. Uh, she's a great environmental ed professional. She's a good cheerleader a wonderful state leader and, um, and a second mom at times and a good friend. And I, Pat, you know, I adore you. And I hope I've done you proud by getting this award. Um, as mentioned, um, you guys know I retired in June and um, the only environmental that I've been doing in the last six months is I want to say learning, looking at the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees when I walk my dogs every day almost every day in the woods or at the lake or a pond. Um, but for now, it's good to take a pause in life. When I left the EP, I was a little tired, burned out. And, um, and I'm kind of, you know, everything that just flashed before me is like this huge phase one in my life. And I'm trying to figure out what phase two will be. Um, when I received the email from Pat Heaney about this award, I did two things. I bawled my eyes out. Um, and the second thing was thinking, I'm certainly not worthy enough to receive a lifetime, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, when I learned about who nominated me, which was Mark, um, that also made me cry all over again. So 
I just have to say that, um, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, Mark, Mark has been my work husband and for almost 25 years, I think. And he's been, he's best geologist and earth scientist I've ever known. He taught me more than I ever learned from books about earth science and earth systems. And um, he's a great teacher with all ages. I could listen to him talk and do his magic with kids at any time. And um, he was all, he was someone um, I would talk to in private when things were crazy at work and we were dealing with politics and bureaucracy. And I grab him and we run down to the only private place in the, on the floor was our storage closet. And because I have a partner, people would always laugh because over and over again, I'd come out of the closet with Mark. And um, that always became a joke with us. Um, but anyways, so thank you, Mark, for that, for that, uh, for the nomination for this award. I also know that Pat, I heard that Pat, Pat, um, Pat Kane had a hand in a letter of support and also Dale. And if that's true, I just want to thank you both for your kindness and support. And I've also was so happy uh, to work with Dale Rosselette for so many years. And I miss our conversations. Dale put up with many cell phone calls on my long drives back home every night because I'd have ideas about things or concerns. And I'd say, Dale, what do you think about this? Dale, what do you think about that? And um, I think we got half of our business conducted on the phone. Um, let's see, I just, um, <clears throat> I've, I've had a lot of time to reflect in the last six months about different things. So just, these are things that, conclusion that I came to, came to and things that made me think, you know, this, these were what I considered my lifetime achievements. I'm always, I've always been grateful to my parents for introducing me to nature when I was a kid, when, we, when I was born, actually. My parents took us to three places, the Lake Erie beaches, and we walked the beaches looking at stuff. And we walked through the dunes and the wetlands there. My, parent, my grandparents had a farm that I visited almost every weekend till I was six and the biggest influence on my life was the Cleveland Metro Parks. I grew up outside of Cleveland. 10,000 acres of woods within 10 minutes drive from my house. Um, and we went there the minute my mom could carry me I'm on her back. We went to the Cleveland Metro Parks. Um, we, I um, have to say that I found joy, peace, and curiosity being in nature, learning from naturalists. I am the product of what a lot of you are doing today with kids. So I hope you always consider what your early influences were in your life to do environmental education and any facet of it, um, whether it's advocacy or education or science or research, what drove you there? And um, know that probably people influence that. Um, I was, when I was younger, I struggled with depression and different types of addiction. And it was nature that soothed me. And that's what, that's what I'm pursuing now is how to help people who struggle with sadness, depression, addiction, and how can we tie them in with nature. When I was 14, I told the naturalists at um, Cleveland Metro Parks, I'd like to do what you do. And they created a job for me. I think they were so impressed that a 14 year old was convinced I wanted that, their career. Um, I became a junior naturalist. And I kind of feel like that's when my work in environmental ed started. Um, and I kind of never stopped after that. Um, I did work for 12 years in nonprofits before working at DEP. Um, I was so grateful for every job. You know, you go through the day to day nuts and bolts, kind of, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. Only now when you're retired, can you look back over your shoulder and everything fit together perfectly, seamlessly. One position led to the other where I was an instructor all the time, working with different groups and I became an administrator part-time, still educating in different situations. I worked at nature centers and camps and environmental ed centers. All those things added up because when I went to DEP and worked in an office for, for over 30 years, I had a really good idea what was going on with the boots on the ground and the places where people and nature came together. So um, I'm grateful for those 12 years. I'm so grateful for my work at DEP. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of politics and bureaucracy there. So just like you have your headaches in nonprofits, we had our headaches. Mark has the headaches now, but I know that he will carry on <laughs> the legacy. He's already doing an outstanding job um, carrying, bringing forth everything we started, plus doing his own thing. Um, I was grateful that Pat Kane brought me into Angie um, in the early, in the late 80s. And I met so many wonderful people. It was by just being an Angie that I got the job at DEP. So I encourage anyone who's job hunting to always keep your keep close ties with Angie because that type of networking is really helpful. Um, I met DEP people through Angie and that's how I got involved. I know Mark mentioned a lot of stuff with the commission. There's so many things that I think about now that have been around for quite a while and served a purpose. Um, and I'm so glad to have a part of them uh, and so glad to have been a part of them. And I, you know, I think that what we, what we could do was influencing what kids, all students had to learn in the state standards and science and social studies. We worked on that in the mid nineties through an advocacy effort. And we did it probably four or five times after that, trying to gain influence and, and um, environmental content being taught to all kids. I think that that was the most powerful thing we did over and over again. And then trying to support what everyone needed to the best of our ability. You know, we wrote grants, we had plans, we had forums, we did trainings, we had workshops. Um, there was always, always many things going on. Um, I'm just... Uh, I know that um, I think Jerry, I saw Jerry Sherler on the on the on this call, and I just wanted to do a shout out to Jerry. Uh, we, Mark and I, and many others on this call spent five years working together to integrate or to, to implement the in, using the environment as an integrated context for learning, the EIC approach. Some of you younger folks may not remember that, but that was a huge deal when we had enough research to show that kids can actually improve their learning by learning about the environment. That was in the I think the mid nineties. So for five years plus, we work with 10 schools and several non-formal non educators to um, bring that process into these schools and to help it carry on. So Jerry, thank you for leading the charge with that. Um, that was one of many of your contributions and I was so happy to work with you. And with the commission, I saw Ann Galley on, the, on this call and have, there's so many of us that have, and Dale, we have so many long-term ties with our state environmental ed commission. Um, and I welcome all of the folks on this call. If you, if you don't know that we have a, sta a state commission or a law for environmental education, you know, if you're interested, get in touch with Mark and see where that all stands. And I would encourage, I, my involvement with Angie, I think I was involved in some capacity for 30 years and I encourage people on this call, it, it takes the members of Angie to volunteer to help keep Angie going and to keep it alive and breathing. So, um, if, you know, I just encourage everybody to get involved. I tend to, I tend to wanna get, wanna do things with Angie that I couldn't do at my job just to get that extra experience. So I just wanted to say, you know, I'm probably gonna get involved with this PA, Pennsylvania EE Association. Um, I don't miss my one hour drive to Jersey, but I certainly love seeing everybody's faces. I miss being at, the, at this awards dinner and being able to catch up with everybody. Um, there is a lot of things I miss, uh, but I'm thinking about, I'm getting involved with other things in my life uh, here um, that are other interests that I have. I also, I grabbed Lois, my partner. She's put up with me for five years, or 25 years, and has dealt with me getting home at two in the morning from Angie meetings and things like that. And I wanted just, I wanted to have her say hi and thank her for her support all these years. So um, I miss everyone. I love you guys. And thank you so much for this, this great honor. It's, it touches me deeply and I thank you. Yay, Congratulations, Tanya. 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 Congratulations, Tanya. Well deserved. Well deserved. Congratulations. Congratulations. Here's my beautiful award. Oh, yeah. hold it up higher, Tanya. Hold it up. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Very nice. nice. Great oh. to see you, Tanya. Beautiful.
I want to thank all of you for joining us to celebrate the 2020 Excellence in Environmental Education honorees. I know you found them inspiring. Next year, we hope to be back at an in-person event. And Jennifer, Jessica, Jenna, Donna, and Tanya, I won't forget that we all owe you a dinner and a drink. <laughs> Okay, so next year we'll invite you as special guests in person. And you're also going to receive a special invitation to our autumn outdoor conference, uh, which we hold at Duke Farms in September. So we hope that we'll get to see you all there as well. So again, thank you all. I'm going to turn it back to Mike Shadroff, our co-president, and I'm gonna say thank you and good night. Thank you so much, Pat. And of course, thank you to all of our awardees. Um, it, you know, the, the awards speak for themselves. And the reason I'm sitting in this seat is thanks to Tanya, who at a, uh, one of the commission meetings whispered to me and said, I think I want to get you more involved with Angie. So <laughs> thank you, Tanya, for my sleepless nights as well. <laughs> um, Again, I also do want to give a real special thank you to BASF, who sponsored the event this evening. And I know Laura McMahon, who's on the call, um, who has helped facilitate this wonderful relationship with Angie. Uh, BASF it creates chemistry for a sustainable future. They have an amazing STEM education program. Uh, we have a lot of information on our website uh, to get to that, to that. So thank you so much to BASF. Of course, also again, the, our big conference sponsors, PSEG, New Jersey Natural Gas, and our anonymous donor, Friend of Science and EE in New Jersey. Uh, thank you for allowing us to have this incredible two-week experience, virtual and free and accessible to everyone who wanted to be here. Um, a very special thank you again to our awards committee, to Pat, to Amy, to Erin, to Carol, to Anne, and to Mike Skelly. Um, you, you know, what a wonderful evening and, and what great work you all do. So thank you. Um, and, oh, and here again, BASF, thank you. And there's our award. I'm, I'm a slide behind, but that's okay. And Next year, as Pat said to me, you know, normally we might say next year in Jerusalem, but next year, East Windsor, New Jersey, please, let's do it. Uh, or is it West Windsor, Princeton area, <laughs> the, the conference center. But it's been an amazing two weeks. Everybody that's on the call and is not on the call and who has volunteered and participated, we have the greatest community in New Jersey, environmental education. And, you know, this is our year. We've been building up for 36 years, but this is our year. So thank you to everybody. Have a wonderful evening. And um, I hope you stay warm and your power stays on with the snow coming into town. <laughs> All right, and you may unmute and say hello to one another. Oh, hey. hi to everybody. Hi, everybody.